episode 10, Still I Rise. And here, uh, we pick up exactly where we left off in the last episode, where Dreamer had struck a deal with Nixley and uh, you know, basically freed her from the dream world or the dream realm or have the dream prison, whatever you want to call it. And the deal that they made was, you know, like Nia had said that, you know, well, Nixie said to Nia, she was like, you know, if you get me out of the dream world, I'll bring your mother back for 24 hours. So, you know, so she comes out, she brings her out, and then Nixley's just like, thank you, darling. She was like, now I will keep my my end of the deal, and I will go out to exact my revenge. And then, you know, Nia was just like, revenge? Like, what, what, <laughs> like, what revenge? But then, you know, but then she was, but then it didn't matter because, like, her mom came back, and then Nixley, like, used her power, brought her mom back. But she did tell her, she was just like, oh, she was like, one more thing, dearie. She was like, oh, she was like, as long as your mother exists in the, in the earthly play she's like you'll be trapped in your apartment for 24 hours and nobody can see or contact you or hear you so you know so Nixie disappears and then you know Nia's mom ends up showing up and then Nia's mom it wasn't even like she was 100% happy to see her like her mom immediately was like girl what did you do and you know they had the conversation she was just like oh like because Nia was like oh mom she was like you know I need your training I need your help she's like I'm lost I don't know what to do and her mom was like first of all like I was sending you signs like she's like you didn't she's like you sent them she said you sent my owl away you you ignored all the signs that I tried to give you and that's what I was saying in the last episode I was like yo Nia couldn't be that stupid like you know but she was but she was she was basically basically like panicking out of fear and then her mom's whole thing she was just like well you brought me back she's like you shouldn't have did it you played with forces that you shouldn't have played with but at the same time you brought me back so since you brought me back she was like screw it since you're saying that you needed help and you need training I might as well train you now so let's get to work so the two of them get to work and they start working on like her training and they start you know start working on her like interpreting her dreams better and her powers they come to find out that the source of like her fear and the source of like why she can't really control her powers, she's still burdened by the pain of the fact that she hurt her sister because her sister was the one that always wanted to have the dreamer powers and she didn't have those powers. So because Nia ended up with them, because her sister got mad and like disowned her, she always felt like the fear, like the anger and like the guilt and the burden of that. So, you know, she was able to kind of like, you know, work through that pain along with her mom. And her mom told her flat out, she was just like, you know, you know, you, that whole situation with like Nixley, she's like, you know, you gotta fix that shit, right? Because she was like, you unleashed her onto this world. And now that you unleashed her onto this world, the world has to deal with it. But it's your problem now to reel her back in. So I'm gonna need you to go out there and like handle it. She said, we've been trapped here for 24 hours. I gave you all the training and the knowledge that you need. So stop the bullshit, stop crying and get your ass out there and be dreamer, be a superhero and save the day. So now Cara, so now, so Mixley now, Nixley now, like, she's going out there trying to exact her revenge against Kara zor -El. But then she ends up getting captured, which was funny because the guy that captured her was one of the two dudes in the episode where we went back in time to Midvale High when Kara and Alex were teenagers. The guy that tried to kidnap the young Kara and put her in that menagerie circus, one of those guys was actually here on Earth because he was trying to rebuild that circus and that menagerie. He kidnapped Nixley, but then when he found out that Nixley didn't have any power, you know, he let her go. And then Nixley saw that as, as an opportunity to use him to her advantage. She, she ended up like talking to him and she, she teamed up with him and she was like, hey, what if I can get you Supergirl, you know, as part of your menagerie? And he was like, all right, bet. So the two of them worked out a plan. They kidnapped this doctor and then the, like the doctor, the scientist that they kidnapped, they ended up building like, you know, this device. The device that was built, it was supposed to be like a freeze bomb. And the whole point of the freeze bomb was it was it, the freeze bomb. It was supposed to be strong enough to the point where it could even trap a Kryptonian. So they worked on this freeze bomb so they could try to like capture Kara. So while all this is going on, Kara, she's dealing with the fallout from the situation with Kelly and like the brother and with like with the little brother because you know because at the end of the episode like Kelly did promise like the little brother that she would always be there for him and she would have his back and Kara made the same promise to the older brother. Kara found out through Kelly that the older brother he lost he lost his apartment that he was supposed to get because there was this one building it was supposed to be an affordable housing building that was also supposed to take in like ex you know like ex cons like ex criminals from the system giving them a second chance giving them affordable houses so they can get back on their feet the government decided they wanted to potentially sell that building to like some big time corporation and that corporation was going to take it over rebuild it and like redo the neighborhood so now Cara you know she flew down she went to go talk to the guy he told her the whole story and then she ended up doing like this weird like you know Instagram video where she was trying to talk to people about supporting the building not being taken over 
and that caused some backlash because there are a lot of people that were just like, oh, but the new project and the new building, it's going to create, you know, like more housing for people. It's going to improve the neighborhood. It's going to prove it's going to be it's going to build more jobs. One girl was like, oh, super girl, you keep talking about how we supposed to have hope. And now that we're hoping for a better building in a better neighborhood, you want to take it away. And Cara's whole thing was it's not about that. She was just and she said it. Now, I'm glad she said it the way she said it. She said to obtain that goal will come at a human it'll, it'll come at a human price it'll it's, it'll come at a human cost because everybody's so concerned about like oh rebuilding the neighborhood and putting money into the community they're not thinking about the lives that are going to get stepped on on the you know like on the way to that you know to that rebuilding process because a lot of people are going to lose their homes because of that but because these people are former criminals nobody cares about former criminals and they're just like oh well screw them we're just trying to do our own thing Cara tried to talk to the politicians they weren't trying to hear it and then she was struggling she was frustrated she ended up talking to Kelly Kelly said that she was frustrated because like the training with Alex wasn't going that great and she can't even master like certain moves and then you know her and Cara had this whole big conversation and then Cara ended up telling her you know, like just trust your instincts and just do things your way. And then Kelly had said to Car, she was just like, you know, well, maybe you should try a different approach because if if Supergirl can get people's attention, you now have to bring in somebody who can keep their attention because and then Cara thought about it, she was like, Maybe you're right. She said, maybe she she said it's not so much me using my platform to get a message across. She's like, I can use my platform and put someone else on that platform who can, you know, who can speak to the people and touch the people on their behalf. So the day that they were supposed to vote on whether or not they were going to sell the building to that, you know, to that big corporation, then Kara showed up, like Super, Supergirl showed up, and then she actually brought the older brother with her. And then he spoke to the council. He talked about his brother and about how they're going to lose their home and about how they're not going to have a chance at a normal life if this, if this deal goes down. And then while he was having that conversation, the building was under attack because Nixley was ready to fire off like her freeze bomb. And then she started freezing the entire building. And as the building was freezing, they were trying to evacuate everybody. Kelly was helping out people. You know, she was trying to like get her guardian on. And then Cara and Jean, they went down to the basement and they found like the freeze bomb. So then Cara decided she was just like, well, I'm gonna use my heat, I'm gonna use my heat vision to blow, you know, to superheat it, and then I'm gonna blow the whole thing up. So she, you know, she used her superheat vision at max power. She destroyed the bomb, she blew it up completely, and then that stopped the building from being frozen, and then she saved the day. At the end of the day, the council, after hearing the speech from the older brother, and then the fact that Supergirl saved the ass, they, they decided against selling the building and they decided to keep it going for affordable housing for, you know, like for the community. And that one white blonde woman, she was mad because she was just like, oh, we just turned this over to the ex-cons. And then Supergirl was like, first of all, bitch, she was just like, you know, these are now reintroduced members of society. They're no longer like ex-convicts and they deserve to be treated with respect and have a second chance just like anybody else on this planet. And then she got mad and she walked away. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, so then like Cara and the gang, like they were talking a little bit because Cara was just like, you know, the guy that tried to like snatch her up, you know, from back in high school, you know, she said that she kind of felt bad for him, that he didn't get a chance. And then Brainy was just like, well, let's just keep doing what we do. And eventually, you know, like we'll, 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 we'll ignite the spark that'll make the change that we all want to see. And then just then Jean got an alert saying that there was like some heat signature, like some residual like energy signature that's coming from the built from the same building where she blew up the bomb. So Cara decides to go down there just to check it out to see what was going on. And then we see Nixie, she goes into the building and then she saw the pieces of the destroyed bomb. And then she absorbed all those pieces, absorbed all that energy, and then she got her powers back. So then Supergirl shows up, and then Nix Lee runs up on her, and she's like, ew, you've been tricked, bitch. Because she said that the, that the freeze bomb had a Trojan horse in it, and it didn't, she said that when Supergirl superheated the bomb, she wasn't superheating a bomb to destroy it she was powering another device that was going to give Nixley her power back. So now Nixley has her fifth interdimensional powers back. She used it to create an, you know, like an ice, an ice wall that froze Supergirl dead in her tracks. And then she was just like, oh, while you left me in the Phantom Zone to die, the only thing I thought about every night was extracting my revenge and killing you once and for all, Kara zor -El. And she was like, today's the day I will finally have my revenge. And then Kara tried to, you know, like break free of the ice. And then she was like, oh, you can't break free darling because she was like you've been bound by magic and only magic can defeat magic 
And then Kara got the idea. She was like, well, if magic can only defeat magic, she ended up calling Mr. Mix Six Piddalik and he is now returned and he popped up like, oh my, like what happened? And <laughs> that's how the episode ended. And you had to knew you had to know that this was coming. Because if we're because it's like fifth in dimension it's like fifth dimensional imp versus fifth dimensional imp. Nixix Pitalik versus Nixie and I actually I, I really I actually do wanna see this. Like, like I really wanna see this. And what sort of like wacky crazy stuff's gonna happen in the process. So that was it. And thank you for tuning in. Uh, leave your questions, comments, and concerns down below. Let me know what you think is gonna happen with the fifth dimensional battle coming up next week. You know, we again we don't have we don't have a full twenty something episodes this season for Supergirl. We only have about like this is episode 10 so i think we only got about five or six more episodes to go so this thing is going to end pretty quickly and we're getting a two-hour season finale so i'm definitely here for it and i want to see what happens hopefully james comes back before the season's over maybe we get a mon l shout out you know you know and then we'll see what happens when car decides to go to argo to be with both of her parents so check me out on twitter check me out on instagram hit me up hit the notification bell so you get notified when my other videos go live like i said because we're doing all the DC, you know, TV superhero stuff. We're doing some Marvel as well. You know, so check me out on YouTube when you leave your comments and we'll keep this train rolling. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Up, up, and away from the Girl of Steel. So until next week for the Fifth Dimensional Power Trip, take care, and I'm out this bitch!